God is good. All the time. time. Turn to your neighbor and tell him this is your night. (laughs) Glory. Nothing greater than worship. Amen. Amen. You know, worship is not a religious act. It's a love act. Amen. The greatest way that you can show God you love him is by worshiping him and seeking him with all of your heart and all of your might and all of your strength. Because see, one of the things the enemy doesn't want you to do is connect with God's presence. Amen? Amen. When there's a disconnect with God's presence, there's a disconnect. Total disconnect. You may know the word, but it's God's presence that manifests the word. Amen? Amen? You want to be backed by the presence of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, things are happening all over the globe. I'm telling you, exposure, exposure, and all kinds of things are going on. I love it. I love it. The enemy is being exposed, and they don't know what to do. Would you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6? I want to welcome everyone here tonight to Tuesday Night Live. (laughs) Oh, glory. It's training session. We're not religious. These are not Bible studies. These are training sessions. Amen. This manual is an eternal manual. It's not about carnal, but it does expose a lot of carnality. (laughs) Hallelujah. In verse 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 12, let's speak it together, please, because what you speak is what you eat, and what you eat is what you become. All things are what? All things are what? Lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the what? Power of any. He says, foods for the stomach and stomach for the foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now, the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take a member of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? you have from God and you are not your own for you were bought at a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are what God's in other words he's talking about something powerful he says he will not be brought under the power of ungodly desires he won't be under the power of food. That's why he talks about food and sexual and fleshly things, ungodly desires. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. He says, I'm not going to be under that power. Amen? And again, here is an area where the Lord has given us the formula. Because one of the things the enemy is always trying to do is release or impress on you desires that are offensive to the Lord. And when you act upon these desires that are offensive to the Lord, it brings a curse on you and your family line. Is everybody okay? That's if you act on them. And he gave us the formula already, amen? And, and in reality of the formula that he gives us, he says, deny yourself, right? Okay, that's called mastering your death. We have talked about it, and the Holy Spirit said, listen, I want you to talk about this and and bring an impartation and teach what I require of my children because one of the things my children should be do is masters of their death. 
I thought, whoa. Everyone say, I am to be the master of my own death. That's why he said, pick up, follow, uh, deny yourself, pick up the cross and what? Follow. Amen. So you got to pick up the cross and fight. And follow is the way of escape. Because you can't escape. And one of the things he wants us to do is escape the deception of the enemy and hell. Hello. Second Corinthians 3. Master of your death. Second Corinthians 3. In verse 16, it says something powerful. It says, nevertheless, when one turns to the what? To the Lord. What happens? The veil is taken away. The veil of what? Of your sight, of your heart. The veil is removed. So that's what's important about when one turns to the Lord. Now, listen, look at this here. It says, now the Lord is the what? Spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Freedom. So where there's a lack of connection with God's presence, there's a lack of freedom. He's saying, when one turns to the Lord, in other words, God's presence, the veil is removed. The hardening of the heart is removed. That's why one of the enemy's greatest ploy is to prevent us from connecting to God's presence. That is his main object against a believer, especially one that has been baptized in the Holy Spirit because he knows if he can keep you from being connected to God's presence, you get drained by his attacks. The more he attacks you, the more you get drained and you get weak in the spirit. Then you know what you begin to do. Fight for your life. Instead of surrender it. The ability to master your own death begins to fade away. Now you're fighting for it. You're fighting for your life. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. But we all with unveiled face beholding in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being what? transform into the same image from what? Glory to glory. Now, what do you think he's talking about from glory to glory? That's God's presence. Every time you get into his presence, you're changing. Every time you connect into his presence. Does everybody get it? That's where the word becomes anointed and pow, it begins manifesting in you. We change from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Mastering your death is recognizing your desires. Without recognizing your desires, you will never master your death. And you can only recognize your desires the more you're connected with God's presence. The more you are filled and you're more sensitive to the things that affect you. You're more sensitive. You can see through the physical realm and into the spirit realm. Again, mastering your death is to recognize your desires or ungodly desires and maintaining connection with the presence of the Lord. It's essential. Everyone knows it. But the enemy comes to cause reason and justification. Because if you've been in God's presence enough times, when you lack that presence, you know it. In fact, you should hate it. <laughs> I hate my flesh. I hate my old man. When I sense that presence, and sometimes God will re remove his presence just to remind you how much you hate your own presence. Does everybody get it? Man, this time I'm crying out to the Lord. Gosh, is there something I did wrong? What happened? He said, I just want to remind you how much you need me. I said, snap, man. I hate it. 
You know, and some people don't because they've been disconnected long enough, they don't even realize it. But everybody else does. You know, it's like, man, your presence stinks, man. You need the presence of God. And what is our objective? It's to exchange your presence for his presence. And that can only be done by making contact in his presence. It's connection in his presence. Let me tell you, we'd all be like-minded if we all stayed connected to the presence of the Lord. And listen, you can come to services and still worship and not make connection because you're too busy thinking about everything else. La, 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 la. I love you, Lord. Yeah, do a little of this. Yeah, blah, blah. And never make connection because it's never sincere. But when there's a connection, you are so sincere because it's a love action. Amen? It's not a religious action. Oh, glory. Let's go a little further. Mark 8. Hallelujah. Although some of us need some Holy Ghost aerobics. For some people, the only time they get exercise is when they come to service. <laughs> they got to stretch before they come in. Oh, yeah. Man, what are you doing? I'm going to service tonight. Oh, you know. <laughs> Man, what service are you going to? Holy Ghost aerobics. I'm going to go make contact with the glory. Yeah. Romans 8.34. I mean, I'm Mark 8.34. Sheesh, how did I get that Romans over here? Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Mark 8.34. When, he, when Jesus had called the people to himself, with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, in other words, whoever desires to come after my presence, let him what? Deny his presence. Hello. And take up his cross and do what? Follow. For whatever, whoever desires to save his life or his presence will lose it. But whoever loses his life or presence for my sake and the gospel's sake will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words and is in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the Holy Spirit angels hmm. whoever desires to come. so the desire to go after the lord is a good desire isn't it so that's something you should recognize man okay i'm desiring i'm thirsty for more of god i want more i want to be touched by the lord i'm going to seek his presence that's a good desire and and and, and the other areas when you touch when you make connection with god's presence when there's a connector there's fruits of righteousness it's no longer about being good it's about being holy. It's being about clean. It's about being sanctified. And you know it. Amen. You know it. You know that the presence of God is there. You sense that there's a connection with him. He doesn't have to say a word to you. He releases his presence. And there's an impression that says, I know. I know. Oh. Oh. So it's a good thing to desire to follow after the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. Why? Because we want to escape bondage. He's trying to get us into a place of escaping things. Escaping bondage, escaping deception, escaping hell. You know? Godly, godly desires are good, but ungodly desires is to save his life. Save his will. Not willing to lose it. This is where you and I must become masters of our death. 
Masters of carnality. Amen? Masters of our death for denying ourselves of every desire that is ungodly and displeasing to the Lord. Every desire. Every desire. That's why the word says, come out from among them and do not touch what is unclean. He wouldn't tell us that if it didn't offend him. And he wouldn't tell us that if it didn't damage me and you. Amen? See, when you cut, touch something unclean, it promotes life. But it's the wrong life. It's life of carnality. It's life of the flesh. But it's not life of eternity. In Colossians chapter 3, Hallelujah. Glory. You know, when I was um, first saved, my and the presence of the Lord, man, that's all I wanted was God's presence. That's all I want now. Nothing's changed. And I would ask the Lord all the time, Lord, where is a place I can go that just can worship and touch you? Because so many people do a couple songs and then they give a word and everybody go home and eat popcorn and watch TV. Nothing wrong with eating popcorn and watching TV. But, you know, we change in God's presence. I mean, when I was a kid going to church, I never changed. I went in as a heathen and left as a heathen. Nothing changed. Because I never made contact with God's presence. Of course, I leave, just leave all the dope and guns and weapons outside the church thinking it changed something. But it didn't. I'd go back, leave the church, and I'd pick them all up again. So I wasn't changing because I never really connected with God's presence. But when he connected with me because I was broken, I'd given up my life. In fact, I had nothing to lose. I had lost everything. See, sometimes that's when he shows up. Amen. Because you, every, every door has been shut. Every bridge has been busted. And you've offended everyone else. <laughs> There's nowhere to go but up. I get calls all the time, man, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I've lost this, I'm that, I'm whatever. I'm, praise God, you're a good candidate. For what? A new life. Amen? You're a great candidate for a new life. But I used to ask the Lord, Lord, where can I go? And when I had sickness or whatever it was, man, I'd want to get in God's presence as much as possible. If there was a place where they worshipped and the door was open, I'd be there that night. I'd keep going and keep going until God healed me. It's amazing how many people don't realize that it's God's presence that will heal you. He'll fix you because you and I can't fix us. We try to fix it and we get worse. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. Let's speak it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things of Above, not on the things, in other words, set your thoughts. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ and God. Say, I died. <laughs> and your life is hidden in Christ. Wow. If you maintain that place of death, if you can master your own death, by what? Exposing your own ungodly desires. That's one of the areas. Verse 3, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, do what? Put to death 
your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Now hold on a second. So what he's saying is, because unless we are not mastering our death, we become children of disobedience. Why? Because then the flesh is mastering. You're still living for you and not for him. By not discerning those desires that are causing you to stumble. Listen, stumbling doesn't mean using, drinking, and fornicating. Stumbling lo means losing sight of God. Not fulfilling your call. Not fulfilling your mission. You stumble. Because if you're not fulfilling the call and doing his will, then you're doing yours and your own call. Amen? Amen? That's backsliding. That's stumbling. And that's disobedience. The word says everything that's not of faith is of sin. So faith is associated with making connection with God's presence also. Verse 7. Oh, we'll start at 6 again. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the what? Sons of disobedience, which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. <laughs> but now you yourselves are to do what? Put off. Who's responsible for putting these things off? We are. In other words, we are responsible. We are to be responsible for mastering our own death. Put out, but now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. And don't lie to one another since you put off the old man with his deeds. And they have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free. But Christ is all and what? And in all. Hmm. So we are to set our desires and expose the un unclean desires and approve of the desires that are pleasing to God. We're to set these desires and thoughts on eternal things, not on temporary things. Not saying that we don't have to deal with temporary things. That's why the word says something powerful. It says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So what are you doing first then? You're seeking the eternal things first. And then he says, and then all things will be added to you. See, so many people have no idea, but they begin to seek the physical, the, the temporary things, the carnal things first, instead of seeking the eternal things first. And I'm going to tell you something. It's grieving to the Holy Spirit. It's grieving that here we are, sons and daughters of the creator of the universe, and we're seeking carnality before godliness. Seek the kingdom of God, and all things will be added unto you. Amen? But it says, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Well, righteousness is produced by connecting with God's presence. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody okay? All right. So one of the things we want to do is in mastering your death or your desires, you must recognize not only your desires, but maintain, again, the connection to God's presence. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, mastering your death. Did you ever want something and know that you shouldn't get it? <laughs> Amen. You just know you're not supposed to do it. You're not supposed to get it. Did you ever want to buy something? <laughs> but you know you shouldn't? Let me tell you, it's the little leaven that leavens the whole lump. It's the little things that God tests us on. 
It's the big things you recognize. It's the little things we don't, but he does. It's the little things that are big to him. The things that you and I can say, oh, no, Lord, I won't do that. Well, somebody's offering you dope or whatever, and you're going to go, no. Well, that's a good thing to recognize. Hello. But what about the little things that were to be recognized? And those are the things that God tests us on. That's what he looks even closer at. James chapter 1 and verse 2. Hallelujah. My brother, do what? Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith, which means what? Connection. Produces what? Patience or endurance, because without God's presence, you can't do nothing. But let patience or endurance have its what? Perfect work. Perfect work. That means mastering something. Hmm. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be what? Perfect. And what? Complete. Lacking nothing. Perfect is to master. Has everybody got it? And complete is to be positioned. I'm going to say that again. Perfect is associated with to master, and complete is to be positioned. So, what we want to do is we want to come into the place that we are perfect and complete. Why? Because then you will lack nothing. And it doesn't mean materialism. It means revelation, discernment, God's presence. You should hate being disconnected from God's presence. You realize you can't live without God's presence. Nothing else is fulfilling. If there's something else that's fulfilling compared to God's presence, and I can tell you it's sin. Hallelujah. Verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to you. But let him ask in what? Faith. With no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he receive anything from the Lord. Why? He is double-minded and unstable in all of his ways. What's he lacking? God's presence. He's lacking disconnect. And because of that, he can't master his death. Look at Jesus was the master of mastering his death. He was the master of it. Oh. So perfect is to master, complete is positioned, lacking nothing, knowing it's coming. You know that it's coming no matter what. An unmastered death is double-minded, and it causes an a manifestation of unconverted soul. The soul's unconverted. In other words, there's only partial conversion, but not full conversion of the soul. The soul is the mind, will, emotions, imaginations, conscience, and subconscious. The soul is not fully converted. That's why God says, let prosperity, let prosper. More than anything, I hope that you prosper where? In your soul. Because that's where the enemy attacks. That's where all the emotions are, the thoughts are, and everything else is. That's where he loves to attack us. But a person that has not mastered his death will be easily swayed. And look, at, isn't a feeling a desire? Emotions are desires? Well, how do you think the enemy plays you? 1 Corinthians 3. So we're over our carnal desires and thoughts. You know when somebody shows up and offers you a Twinkie, and you know you're on a special diet, you're like, man, you know what? I would really like to taste that. But you'll know. I'm dead to that. Take dominion over that desire. 
1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. Let's speak it, please. For we are God's fellow workers, and you are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise, what? Master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed in how he, what? Builds on it. For no other, no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Let me share something with you. By not mastering your death, another foundation begins to build. Watch this. Look at this. He said in verse 12, Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, and precious stones, wood, hay, and straw, each one's work will become clear. Wow. Wow. So he's expressing these are the things that somebody will start to build on when you haven't mastered your death. Some people build on their jobs more than their relationship with the Lord on all kinds of other things. But each one's work will be become clearer for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it, endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If any among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool, that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Paulus or Cephas or the, or the world or life or death or the things present or the things to come, all are yours. And you are what? Christ, and Christ is God's. Wow. Master builder. By ma you know, Paul was a master builder. And he became a master builder because one of the first things he learned was to master his own death. Replacing carnal and worldly foundations with the eternal foundation in Christ Jesus. Again, when we do not master our death, we begin to build another foundation. Different fulfillments come. No longer the fulfillment of God's presence, but the fulfillment of other things. First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter six. In verse three. Everybody there? Let's speak it. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, uh, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such Withdraw yourself. Wow. Now, godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we're going to carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these things, we shall be what? Content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. 
For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have to strayed from the faith. In other words, they've strayed from the presence of God. They now work for fulfillment because money is a reward to them, which is a false fulfillment. Not that we don't need it. Amen? But it becomes their God. And that's a Luciferian doctrine. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, man or woman of God, flee these things and pursue what? Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and confessed the good confession in the presence of what? Many witnesses. You know, so many people have not reached that place where they mastered their death. It is an honor to master your death. Amen? It's an honor. And God has granted us that place through the anointing of Christ by connecting us with his presence. You and I were baptized in the Holy Spirit not just to become workers for carnality or for money. You and I were baptized, baptized in the Holy Spirit to be connected with God's presence so that the divine nature of God could express himself. Remember, there's that place of position We've talked about this already. There's a divine positioning where you and I must maintain. And it cannot be maintained without mastering your death and being connected to the presence of God. Many people are just connected to the word of God. There's a lot of people I know that know the truth, but they're not free. They're still doing stupid stuff out there. Still doing their own will. They say they love Jesus. Let me tell you, there's a lot of people that love Jesus, but not many people are in love with Jesus. There's a difference. Because when you're in love with his presence, you're connected. We desire his presence. We love his presence. And we should love the truth. And his presence is truth. Does everybody get it? Hallelujah. Galatians 2. I believe everybody connected in God's presence is going to be sucked out of here like a vacuum. When he says, come, poof. Whoa. There's going to be sneakers left all over the place. Jewelry. All kinds of stuff. They can have it all, man. Because we got it all then. Woohoo. Galatians chapter 2, is everybody there? Verse 17. Let's speak it. But if, we, if, but if while we seek to be what? Justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is Christ therefore a master of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a what? Transgression, in other words, building on another foundation because of the lack of mastering one's own death. For I, through the law, died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the natural, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is Paul who's expressing He's learned to master his death. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Wow. No longer I that live, but him that lives. That's a mastered life of death. <laughs> John chapter 10.
You know, the world doesn't understand this. You'd be sitting in the de Department of Motor Vehicles waiting to get called up after about two hours. You know, you're waiting. Somebody starts grumbling and complaining. Next thing you turn around and say, man, it's a good day to die. And they're going to they think, think you're weird. If they don't hit you first, you know. John 10, 10. I suggest you don't tell that to a probation officer also. <laughs> or the policeman that pulled you over. <laughs> hey, it's a good day to die. All yeah, right, come with me. John 10, 10, let's go. The thief does not come except to what? Steal, kill, and, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But the harling, he is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. What does he care about? Money. And I, I remember one time I was at this place doing some work, and it was, it was this pastor's place, and the pastor was there, and I, he was on the phone. He says, I'll go preach wherever they give me the most money. Man, did he expose himself by the fruits? I looked at this dude, and I thought, my goodness. I thought maybe about moving out of the way or running from the building runaway because I didn't know what was coming. But it grieved my spirit. I'll preach wherever they give me the most money. Whoa. He was boasting about how great of a uh, speaker he was, this, that, and whatever. And I'm there, I'm just doing con some construction there or something. And he's in there boasting away. I'm thinking, man, he's on the phone. Start looking for the plug of the phone for a minute. I thought, man, this guy needs to get unplugged. Verse 14. You know why? He, not willing to master his own death. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by mine. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. He was the master of it. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore, my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up. This commandment I have received from my Father. Do you understand that you have the power to lay down your life. It's called mastering your death. And you also have the power to raise your life, the old life. To deny, does everybody get it? You have that power. But God, through the anointing of Christ, requires that we lay down our life and master our own death. Luke 22. Luke twenty two thirty nine. Mastering your death. Oh. Did you ever see something you wanted to say something? And you did? <laughs> says, Gosh, I should have not said that. I knew it. And we all make mistakes. But just get in position right away. You repent so you can get back on the cross. <laughs> Luke 22, verse 39. Coming out, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. 
And when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and he prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. What was he doing? He was mastering his own death. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then he did what? Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Before Jesus could die on the cross, he had to die in the garden. He could have never made it to the cross by not dying before he got there. He mastered his death. Verse 45. And when he rose up from prayer and he had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you what? Enter into temptation. And while he was still speaking, behold, a multitude, and he who was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near to Jesus to kiss him. And Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Now, did Judas master his death? No. People that do not master their death usually become betrayers. When those around him saw what was going to happen, they said to him, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus answered and said, permit even this? And he touched his ear and healed him. Can you imagine seeing this going on? Jesus probably picked up his ear and, you know, slapped it right on the back. You know, man, what are you doing? I told you to pull that sword away. Can't you master your death? I'll protect your Lord like God needed protecting. Verse 252. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders who had come to him, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you daily in the temple, you did not try to seize me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Having arrested them, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house. But Peter followed at a distance. Now when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them, and a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, This man was also with him, Jesus. But he did what? He denied it. Why? Because Peter had not learned to master his death yet. Saying, Woman, I do not know him. And after a little while, another saw him and said, You also are of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And after about an hour had passed, another confidently affirmed, saying, Surely this fellow also is with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are saying. Immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me what? Three times. So Peter went and wept bitterly. Wow. Why? Because Peter did not master his death yet. He hadn't learned yet. But he was learning. <laughs> there is pain. There's pain. There's sorrow. Why? Because you must give up everything so you can gain everything. You can't tell the world that. They don't get it. Philippians chapter 2. Jesus was the example of the master of his death. Now let me share something with you, which is vital. You must be a person of prayer to master your death. It is impossible to even get in God's presence without prayer. 
Hello? Oh, hallelujah. Peter did not learn the master's death and denied Christ. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he teaches us by trials and tribulations and challenges and then convictions and chastisements to master your death. Hallelujah. Philippians 2. Everybody there? Anybody there? <laughs> Glory. In verse 5, Philippians 2, 5. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Now, don't go home and do something stupid. Let God master your death. Amen. <laughs> if you have to look in the mirror, it's okay. Get rid of those things. Philippians 2, 5. Let's speak it. This, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider Robert to be equal with God, but made himself of what? No reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in the appearance as a man, he did what? He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of what? Death. death. Even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow, and those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work do what? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. And do all things without what? Complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Humbled to obedience of death. You have to, listen, it takes humility to master your death. Amen? Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 and starting at verse 1. Who has believed our report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form of comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men. Who are they talking about? The master of his own death. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, and as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Because he he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. 
Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He, he has put him to grief when you make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I'll divide him the portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgression transgressors and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors the master of death and I want to close the first Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18 Mastering your death. We will never be the same. First Corinthians chapter one and verse eighteen. Everybody there? Let's speak it together. For the message of the cross or the message of the death, because if you really look at it, that was about, the cross was a representation of mastering his death. Can you imagine allowing your own father to smitten you for a good cause? For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh should glory in, the pre in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that it is written he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We welcome Holy Spirit for the training and teaching that we may master our own death, continually denying ourselves, picking up the cross to follow. Lord, we just take this opportunity and repent for every area where we have built our own foundation where we stepped into the places of false fulfillments and not the fulfillment of your presence. I ask, Father, tonight that you would cleanse us with the blood of the Lamb and that you would heal each and every one with the stripes of Jesus and bring us to that place where we can all master our own death so your name, your character, and your divine nature can be expressed through each and every one in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.